Over the past couple months, a ton of phone case manufacturers have reached out and asked me to make a video reviewing their product. Well, I collected a few of the best ones, and now I'll be comparing them in some rigorous tests in the ocean to see which one is the best. I analyzed a ton of different criteria for them, and I think you're going to be surprised which one I ended up picking. What is up guys? My name is Shane True Danger. I'm here today at this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful beach. We love to go diving here. And I've been sent a ton of phone cases. You can see these four of them here. I keep getting asked by these companies, can you do a review? Can you post about it? Whatever. And when they send it to me, since they're not offering to pay, I'm like, no. But they beg me, they send it anyways, because they know that I can create amazing, amazing underwater content. So if you're a company out there with an underwater product, Send me an email, let me know, we'll get something started. But anyways, what you guys are here to see today is a review comparing these four phone cases. Two of them you need an app to use, two of them you don't. So we're gonna start with the ones that don't need the app and then we're gonna show you guys the ones that use the app. I'm here with Brittany today. So I'll tell you guys which ones I think you should buy. Some of them are more expensive, some of them are cheaper. And then I've also done one of these before. I compared an older version of one of the cases that I have today and what I could find was the cheapest, most functional one on Amazon. I don't recommend these little sleeve lanyard things. They look stupid when you wear them. They are stupid, don't use them. So use one of these legit cases if you really wanna take your phone out in the water and uh, don't feel like getting a GoPro, whatever it is. So so if you guys are new here, if you found me because you're looking for a review on phone cases, go down, hit subscribe. I review underwater products here and there, mostly make videos about exploring the ocean, picking up trash and uh, finding treasure out there. So go down, hit subscribe, ring the bell. It's the best way to make sure you get notified every single time I post a new video. And uh, let's go get in the water and compare these phone cases. But wait, first, before we go, uh, we're gonna go back to my house and look at some technical aspects of each one of them, compare them. Uh, I'll show you guys like their prices and, and I'll give you guys some insight as to what I think about them before I take them in the water. And then we'll go in the water and do the final test, the most important part. What does the quality look like? How does it work? Like, can you use it easily? So let's go do all of that. All right guys, so I just wanted to give you my first impressions about some of these water housings or phone cases or whatever before we go out um, because it might be what you're thinking uh, before like if you're looking at buying them and then you're like oh well this one has this this one has this so it might be some of the stuff you think that way we're all sort of on the same page when we go get in the water and we know why I did the things that I did to test them and uh, what to look at in the footage when you're looking at it. So very first, I'm gonna show you guys, and these will be in order of how I shoot them in the water. So the very first one is this Godome one. Um, it had this uh, port cover with it. I'm not sure if they all come with it, but this thing's pretty nice. It's like uh, this big floppy piece of rubber. I won't be able to put it back on on camera, um, but this big dome is gonna allow us to do over under photos. So that's gonna be super cool. I'm gonna try that out and then I'll see if I can do it with any of the other phone cases just to show you guys like uh, what it's like to try to do it and to not have the dome ready. Um, another thing that I wanted you guys to see and uh, hopefully I can get close enough here. So it's got this rubber that is like very, very thin. I don't know if you can tell, like I can pinch it. That's how thin it is. And the other one that we we're gonna look at, I won't be able to do this. So um, it's very, very thin and sticky. So when the phone is in there, it's like a little bit awkward to do the touch, but then you can figure it out and it'll actually work pretty well. So it is possible to get it to um, like, actuate the phone or, or to use it, I mean. And then, uh, so it came with these foam inserts and there's two of them. And then I'm pretty sure with the second one, you're supposed to cut out space for your button. So I have space for a lock here and then uh, my volume button's right here. So I'll be able to use the volume button by sticking my finger into this soft rubber and then pressing the volume button to click it for photo and video while I'm underwater. So that's really cool because otherwise this type of phone case, it's like very difficult to use underwater because uh, the water touches it and then it tries to tap the phone. So uh, you'll see that when we take it out. Okay, so that's my first impression about this one. It's gonna be great for over-unders and not so good underwater. The one that we're gonna take out with it simultaneously, I'll be doing two at a time um, for all four of these cases, uh, is this one from Divolk. It has this protective uh, plate thing. It's just kind of just a piece of uh, plastic, like thin. Um, but that's really good because this screen that it has, 
is probably the most expensive part of this case. I mean, it's built really well. Like if you look at the build quality compared to these two, you can really tell why the prices are different. Um, and so if you're looking for a budget one, you might just be automatic, go with this one. And then if you have money to spend, want to get something nice and you're doing scuba diving, you might want to look at this one. Um, but we're still going to have to see what they look like in the water for the final decision. So with this one, it's got this really, really nice screen on it. And then you want to make sure you always have something inside of it because I could totally imagine like having this in my luggage and then like digging around, moving something around and then something just pokes hard into this and then punctures it and then you're done for like your your whole trip is ruined the build on this one super super rugged the only thing that i'm noticing that it's missing especially compared to the last one is there's no way to mechanically press those buttons so we have full screen access but then nothing to press volume uh, or power button, which can be nice to lock your phone. Um, so there's no way to lock the phone on this one. I think maybe with the accessibility, like if your lock button is broken, you can get the little thing on screen where you tap it and then navigate and then put lock. So you could put that. Um, I don't like to use that. I don't like to have it set up. So I never bothered with it. Um, cause I've used this case before their previous version in the last video that I did go check it out with the card right there. If you want to see the last video that I did about, uh, underwater cases and, um, so yeah, the build is really strong on this one and then it slides in through the top, uh, which is pretty cool. I think because then there's less like moving parts with the, like this is where you can get a leak from and it's very small and very simple. That's good. Cause this one very, very large leak surface. So you have lots of opportunities for weak points, a grain of sand, a hair, something like that to get in the way and cause a leak, which can be very dangerous. You don't want to ruin your phone. Um, most of our phones, I think by now are waterproof though. So you don't have as much to worry about with that, but it still is annoying and can cause all kinds of other issues for you um, that you don't want to have to deal with while you're out diving. That's it for these two. Let's get on to the two other ones, which I believe you can't use the screen on them. So that's like how I'm separating the two is one you can use the screen, one you can't. Okay, so the next one is the Pro Shot case. Um, it came in this cool carry pouch, which is pretty nice. Uh, these other ones just came in cardboard boxes, so not as good for portability, but, and I'll have to check the Amazon listing. Um, again, I didn't purchase any of these. These were sent to me, and uh, but they're not paying for this video, so I'm not gonna talk about any one in particular better than the other. So what we got with this one is, of course, the case, and then it came with this little stick um, with a lanyard, which is, I mean, they're only like two or three bucks on Amazon. Um, and then it uses the same thing as the GoPro. So this case can hook up to any of your GoPro mounts. I was joking with Britt that it'd be funny if I put it on my mask mount and then was uh, swimming around like this, but obviously there'd be a ton of drag right there. So don't get this thinking that you're gonna hook it up to your mask because it won't work. But besides that, uh, one thing that I really like about this one is that it's got the mechanical buttons. And I have actually used this before and it comes with an app, which can be a little bit annoying because like one of the things that I love about the other two cases is that you can use them with whatever app you want. So you could be creating a TikTok on the TikTok app uh, using either of the two cases before. Whereas with this one, you can only use the app that it has or the camera app kind of. Um, like on TikTok, I don't know if you can start recording with these buttons or if it just changes the volume, but uh, you can't use the screen, that's for sure. So uh, you might not want this one if you're wanting to do Snapchat, something like that. Um, but then it would work if you're using it out of the water. Like if you go to a water park, this one would be perfect. This is actually like what I would 100% recommend because it's like rugged, it's not too expensive. It's not so bulky and then it'll keep your phone protected from the water. And so, it, I mean, at the end of the video, we might end up saying that each one has their own use, but I think that there's gonna be a winner that's like the absolute best. Um, so this one, uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting. Looks super easy to use, except for that you have to use the app. Okay, so this next one is Pixco. 
I've never heard of it before. I've actually heard of the Pro Shot case. This one, I have no idea. They just randomly emailed me and were like, hey, can we send you this? And I was like, no, please don't. I have so many phone cases at my house already. And they're like, no, we really want to send it. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Like it was very clear that I could not stop these guys from sending me this case. So anyways, uh, this is it. It's got this huge window. So it'll definitely fit with any phone that fits within the form factor. And then you're probably wondering what this little guy is right here. Well, when you put your phone in, you suction it with that thing and then it keeps it still in one spot. Now, one thing that's cool about this one is that it doesn't have power and volume buttons. It actually has these mechanical buttons here that go down to a Bluetooth device right here. So I've already tested this. I made sure that it worked. Um, I was able to connect via Bluetooth to my phone. It was actually pretty easy using their app once again, um, which I find a little bit disappointing because it would be cool to be able to go on Snapchat and stuff like that. Because with this thing, you could record on Snapchat, go up to the surface, it'll upload, and then go back down and do another one. That's super cool. That's what I used to do with my old, old phone case. Uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it was like, it just had mechanical buttons right here that would press on the screen and then you're able to use Snapchat with it. I thought it was so cool. Um, and I know a lot of you guys are probably not thinking about Snapchat, but it's just like, that's one of the hardest things is to be able to use Snapchat underwater. So that's like the example that I'm using. Um, so anyways, with this one, uh, it seems like it could be really good. Another thing that could harm it is like right here, this is all plastic versus on the dive vault case. This is glass and it's kind of protected there. So you know, I could see this one getting all scratched up just from using it, keeping it in the luggage. Like it didn't come with a protective sleeve or anything. So this is actually the surface that you shoot through. So I could see that causing some issues and making it not have the best video ever. But um, if you're buying a $50 phone case to take your phone underwater, you maybe don't care so much about the quality. And so, yeah, this Bluetooth thing is pretty cool. And then it makes me think that one of these two is gonna be the best for shooting shore break because when you're shooting shore break, you really, really need that mechanical button so you can just grab it and hit the button and it clicks. Um, and then, uh, so one thing that's left out here is the Axis Go phone case. That one's really popular, uh, made by Aquatech. I used to have one. Um, I ended up breaking the screen. It was actually a lot like this one on the Pro Shot, and I punctured it uh, just by using it. Um, and so it was like so weak and so poorly built that it ended up puncturing just from regular use. And so I don't recommend that to anyone. It'll work okay for uh, shooting shore break and surfing because you have that trigger that uh, you can buy separately for another like 50 or $150 or something. It's crazy how much they charge for that stuff. It's just injection molded plastic, not that smart of a design. It's so unfortunate how much they charge for it. Um, but anyway, so with that one, you get that mechanical uh, trigger button to be able to shoot with. So it's really good for surf. Um, but then I could see this one being just as good. And it's like, it's not that hard just to grip it like this and then paddle with it also, instead of having this big bulky trigger, obviously you're going to want to put a lanyard on it so you don't lose it. But, um, I could see shooting surfing with this one or maybe this one, but this one's like a little bit more bulky and I'm kind of preferring the horizontal orientation, which why are you shooting on your phone? If you're going to post horizontal phones are for vertical, we consume vertical. I could go on forever. Anyways, uh, let's go get in the water. Now we've done enough reviewing. And then when we're, when we're done in the water, we're going to come back here and I'll tell you guys who I think is the winner of this four phone free for all. And, uh, it's going to be one of them. The first thing that's unique about the G-Dome is that it's the only one that floats. So you can see uh, the dive volk sinking down. And then this uh, screen is a little bit difficult to touch underwater, but if you can line up the bubble, it is possible. But then I wouldn't try to depend on this. And you guys will see later when I try to do this, it basically doesn't work. But then when you first get into the water with it, it'll work for a little bit. So I was actually able to uh, punch in my phone's code and then get the camera open. But normally you'd want to just open the camera with a button. Um, and you can see already it's doing random stuff on the screen. I'm like trying to get to just keep it on the camera and switch the, the, uh, the magnification of the lens and it's doing all this other crazy stuff. So anyways, I finally got it to 0.5, which I think is the best results for 
um, underwater photography and then I'm just digging my finger into that hole to use the volume button to shoot with. And so I'm getting really good results right here. It's super easy for me to shoot them and it's not doing anything crazy. I'm not able to tap the back screen to focus, which is a pretty important feature, um, especially when you're trying to shoot underwater. Um, but as long as you can get it to uh, sort of have that focus correct, then it'll be just fine. As you guys can see here, I'm having no issues whatsoever. So now I'm gonna test out using the zoom lens on this camera. So I've got it zoomed in. I, I tried to put it at 2X, but like it was doing before, it was moving around a lot. So I'm not sure exactly what the zoom factor is right here. And then uh, I try to dive down with it. I have to resist all that buoyancy that it has. And then of course, on the way down, it goes out of focus. I'm doing everything I can, I'm trying to remove that bubble so that I can tap it and then it won't tap because I've dove down. And then finally, when we get back to the surface, it lets me tap it and it focuses. All right guys, I'm currently talking to you in the Go Dome housing. One thing that I'm really loving about this case so far is this over under on it. It is incredible. So it's the only housing that has a dome, but as you can see, it gets these water spots really quickly. I didn't lick it properly before we got in here. Uh, and so that's my fault. I'm not sure exactly the performance of it, but so far it's really good. And you just want to make sure you never get scratches on this thing. Uh, but I'm loving those over under shots. It's super cool, especially at a place like this. You can see that you can take these really epic selfies, but the, that uh, clarity on the port does not last long until the water spots come. So. Let's go do some more extensive tests on the dive vault case now. You guys saw the go dome. We're going to switch over to the dive vault and see how it performs for the underwater photography. So like I said, we're on the dive vault now. It's a little bit difficult to swipe up just because it's on the edge of the screen, but you can always just tap on the camera right there and it works super easy. So I was able to get the camera open and then uh, I like to swipe in the middle like that because again, the edges are more difficult to use, but um, if you want to just swipe in the middle, it's super easy. And then we're going to go on 0.5 again. Love that 0.5 camera for underwater. It's just like my DSLR. Um, you can see we have a little bit of... Uh, stretching on the sides there. It's pretty typical with the 0.5, like Brittany hates the 0.5 camera for above water because it stretches her out so much, but underwater, it's super cool to have that effect, make the leg, make the fins nice and long. So now we're going over to video mode. Um, it's going really well. One thing that you'll notice if you go back to the G-Dome videos, um, it has a reflection on the video because of the dome port, but then because this one doesn't have a dome port, you never get that reflection. So you see really, really clean video um, that's like, it looks like it's just the camera raw underwater. You guys see those bubbles coming out. That's no issue. It's just part of the case. It has um, some air pockets in it that are just leaking out. So the case is not leaking. So if you get this one and you see that in yours, don't worry. Um, so now we're going again. I wanted to try another video, just showing you guys as much footage as possible so you can get a feel for um, how this stuff works. And it's like, it's so stable. It's so easy. And then now we're trying the zoom test. So again, I'm rocking it with one hand. I can hold the other one in my other hand. And it's so simple and easy on this case. Um, definitely getting some bonus points here. The fact that you can actually use it um, for a, a scenario like this where you want to zoom in. Hey guys, I'm talking to you now with the dive vault case. Uh, it looks like the over-unders were not working with this one at all. But the thing is, is this one is not designed for that type of use. It's designed for super deep diving. Uh, hopefully you can even hear me right now. I've still got this one running so I can get the audio from this if I need it. Um, and I'll let you know if you can't hear me at all. Cause one thing that to me is important when you're out there is getting some audio, uh, either whether it's whales underwater or if you want to talk to your phone case and say something like I am now, you want to be able to hear yourself and know that you have to scream to do it. And I am talking pretty loud right now. So the case works really well for what it's for. And so that's why you notice right here, we're diving at the surface and it probably seems like the go dome is working better. For me, I would prefer that one for this use because we're at the surface, but if I was gonna go scuba diving, I would definitely want the dive bulk. 
So one more thing is you guys might have noticed the ease of use of the screen. Uh, I find the Difolk screen a little bit easier to use. So that's it for these cases uh, that you can interface your screen with. Now let's check out some cases where you can't touch the screen at all. They depend on an app and some buttons on the outside. Uh, so we'll get to compare whether screen is better versus mechanical buttons. Uh, so let's go switch the phones into the other case and we're going to come back out here. I forgot to start recording, but this one you can actually touch it. I didn't realize. And then the other one that I showed you guys with the Bluetooth remote, you notice it's not in my hand right now because the Bluetooth remote stopped working by the time we got here. So I think it shorted out something like that. And uh, so now we're just going to use this one. I'll show you guys what this one does. And then obviously the, the one with the Bluetooth remote, don't buy that. It didn't work. We have to use the app, I believe. So as you guys can see, I can interface the screen, but then if I go underwater, nothing. So a pro shot case, that's the one that we need. Okay, so the way that this app works that's different than the other stuff is that it actually locks the screen out completely. So you can go under it. And like you can see, do different functions with it uh, while you're using it. So I'm gonna get it on a wide angle. So I finally got the Pro Shot case locked and loaded. It took me a minute to figure out the buttons and what's going on on the left, it's completely messed up. So it uses an HEVC by default. I don't think that there's a setting to turn it off. So it was completely messed up on the computer. I couldn't use it at all. Um, pictures turned out fine. They went by pretty quick there because I didn't take that many. And then back to the video, I'm pretty sure that this one's all glitchy too. Basically, like if you try to put the video straight from this app, uh, onto Premiere Pro, it does not work. So I had to use a third party software and pay a dollar for a thing that could use the codec that it was shooting in. So it was so annoying um, to have to get all this extra stu stuff to get it to work. And then I was not even completely happy with the results of the video, uh, mostly because it was shooting 30 frames per second, which to me is totally unacceptable when the phone can so easily shoot 1080p at thir uh, 60 frames. Hey guys, so I'm talking to you now on the Pro Shot case. Yeah, so the app is working okay. I think it takes some getting used to, and maybe I'm just not giving it enough time to learn. I think that the zoom shot was one of the worst out of the cases because I think it was just doing digital zoom on the 1X camera and not utilizing the 2X camera at all. Um, and it zoomed in a little bit too far. It's hard to eyeball like the right amount of zoom. So it's probably around 3x and that's why the shot was too close, too pixelated and uh, not really able to control it very well. Um, but besides that, the case works pretty well. You are actually able to interface the phone um, while you're above the water at the surface, which can be really good for like, if you're using this as like an action camera and you're just getting it wet, then it's like totally great because then you can use all the phone features, but then uh, you can still interface your phone and keep it protected from the elements. So overall, it's pretty good. I think that, uh, well, I'll tell you about my favorite when we get back to the house and uh, we can go over uh, all of the pros and cons of each one, talk about the prices and the uses and everything. So uh, anyways, this is the Pro Shot case once again and pretty good. Um, so let's go get in. I'm exhausted out here, all this vertical swimming. Okay, let's go. All right, guys, so you heard what I had to say on the water. We're back. We're going to look at these phone cases one last time and then pick a winner out of all of them. So one thing I can say for certain, the one loser is this Bluetooth uh, uh, shutter release thing. And I got it to work as soon as I got home. Like, I have no idea what could have gone wrong at the beach. But the thing is, is if it doesn't work when you need it to, then it's never working. So I couldn't get it to work while I was out there. Really, really unfortunate because I did honestly want to try this one and give it a shot. I just I can't see myself going back out again and trying to do this again and then like delaying this video and then the thing doesn't even work. So I'm giving this one a zero. I don't recommend it unless it's the cheapest one or something, but I don't think that it's the cheapest one. The other three kind of tie and the reason is that they all work for something different. So when we talk about the Divolk, 
uh, it's very clear that it has the highest build quality, like undeniable best build quality, also the most expensive. So it makes sense. You're getting what you pay for. Um, but then if you're going scuba diving, these other cases are just not going to cut it for you. I think that they'll work okay and it's all right. But then another thing is like when something is happening, like if you're in a cave and a shark is coming up to you, your friend is lighting it and it's like swimming right at you, you don't want to be on the pro shot case cycling through the buttons trying to get it back to photo mode so you can snap a photo and then again cycling through and then getting the wide angle and then like you're just not going to make it whereas with the dive volk it's intuitive because you're literally just using the phone screen you open the camera and then put it on wide angle put it on video and then start recording right away it doesn't take you that long so i think for being ready to shoot that, which is one of the most important things about having a camera is being able to shoot with it. Um, I think the dive Volk is the winner uh, for durability and for scuba diving. So the reason that I say that, that it only wins for scuba diving is because when we, is because when we look at the go dome, you just can't beat that over under video. Like that was so beautiful. We weren't able to get it with the dive Volk as you can see. And I think even the dive Volk kind of zoomed in a little bit and it's nice to have this super wide angle to really, like really show the scene. Like this is the closest thing to my DSLR with the wide angle with the dome. Um, and I could probably honestly fool some of you with these photos if I edited them and like really tried. Uh, so when we were out there, we were being quick. I knew that Brittany was gonna get cold, so I didn't wanna be out there for too long. Um, but this one just has really, really awesome wide angle shots. Obviously you have to have a phone with wide angle capabilities. So I'm using the iPhone with a 0.5 camera. Um, but then when you guys saw, we tried to switch it over to the 2X to get a zoomed in shot. This thing was a mess. It was all over the place. I couldn't control it properly because the screen kept getting touched by this stuff. Um, by like water touching it or whatever. So Brittany would go down and dive. And then one of the times she was looking at me like, what the hell, why aren't you filming? And I was still fiddling with it at the surface. So another example, you wanna have the gear that's ready to go and you don't have to mess around with it. So um, I don't know, you guys are gonna have to decide on that one. Who's the winner between the dive Volk and this? For me uh, personally, I really can't decide like because with the dive Volk is so comfortable like I know that I can take a video I know that I can take a photo I don't have the over under and for me sometimes that's okay um, if I absolutely had to get an over under I'm gonna go with this one so then now we come down to the pro shot which I want to give a fair mention to like I said in the water this one is really good for protecting it from water so I don't think that it's the best necessarily for uh, going out like free diving and stuff the screen a little bit easier to use use but you have to use their app which can be so annoying like because I don't want to have to use another app like like you, you definitely don't want this scenario either you finally get to your vacation destination you're out there you don't have your sim card because you didn't want to pay for internet you got Wi-Fi at home it's okay and then the app offloaded off your phone and then you can't use the case so that would be like the worst thing that could happen I, th I mean your phone could flood that would be worse but so the worst thing would be going to use it you don't have the app ready and then you just can't do anything with this besides like try to use the camera and it doesn't really work to the full capability so um, it's really good for like action sports stuff and splashing but I don't know if I would bet on this one for diving or like going on a dive trip snorkel trip whatever it is I don't know if this one is my topic especially with the good Go Dome being, I think the cheaper option, I, I I should have looked at the prices at some point, haven't looked at the prices at all. Um, you guys already know the place, prices because I told you in the video, um, but, but I'm thinking the Go Dome over this one. So I guess that's the ranking right there. You got Dive Volk, number one. They're gonna be stoked that they got the, the number one spot right there. Um, and then Go Dome second, Pro Shot third, and then Pixco, I don't even know what to do with you. But yeah, so that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you go down and hit like. Uh, all the links to these products are down below when you buy them. From those links, you actually do support me. Um, that last video that I did with these has been getting me like 30, 40 bucks a month. It's nothing crazy, but it's just nice to get a little bit of revenue from my work. Um, and then of course you can become a member. You can do all these other things. I'm sure you guys know what you can do to support me. Don't worry. And finally, if you're a company with one of these products, I don't want a bunch of crap in my house, but if you have a really cool unique underwater product that you want me to do a review of uh send me any email anyways guys thanks so much for watching i hope to see you next time and that's all the stuff we saw bye